What's up guys? Jeremy the Machine Scott here. Welcome back to my channel. Before we begin, make sure you subscribe and hit that like button down below. Today we're going to discuss some of the obstacles in a Spartan race, all right? So if you're thinking about doing a Spartan race or maybe you've even done a Spartan race, this video is going to be very informative to you. But especially for those who have not done a Spartan race and you want to do one and you're not really sure what obstacles are going to be in a Spartan race, this is the video for you. There are anywhere from 20 to 25 obstacles. Usually if you do a 5K, if it's your first race and you're just doing a 5K or you're just going to go beast mode and you're doing a 10K, then there's going to be 25 obstacles. But if you're doing a 5K, there's going to be about 20 obstacles, most likely. Every 5K that I've done, there's been 20 obstacles in the race. Some are easier than others, some are harder than others, and if you can't do the hard ones, you just have to do a burpee penalty. It's like 25 or 30 burpees, and you can do them together as a team, which is why it's fun and awesome to get a team together and race as a team. If you don't have a team, you could join my team, Team Quick. Okay, you can shoot me an email at quickfit321 at hotmail.com. That's Q U I K F I T 321 at hotmail.com if you want to get on a Spartan team and you want to race with my team. You want to go and smash one of these races. Okay, it's going to be one of the funnest things you've ever done. Let's talk about the start. Starting out. Okay, normally to get to the start, you have to jump over a wall or sometimes climb under some barbed wire just to get to the start. Okay, if once again, the benefits of having a team, if you're having trouble, if you're, I've seen people struggle with climbing the wall, even on my team, and we all help each other out. We help each other get over that wall or whatever obstacle it is that you're gonna be doing and you have a team, you guys can help each other out, you can finish as a team. So that's the awesome thing about racing with a team. So you have the start. Normally in the start, it's real crowded, it's real packed, and uh, and once they tell you guys to go, normally you start out walking, it's really hard to start running because you're shoulder to shoulder, but as the race continues on, everybody starts to spread out, and you get more room, and you can run and pick up the pace. Try to pace yourself, and go at a nice and even pace that you can maintain through the whole race, especially if it's your first race. So that's the first obstacle that we're talking about, is just getting off of that start line, and the best way to start. Pace yourself, go to even pace, maintain, reserve your energy, especially if it's your first race. You don't want to use all your gas right away and then you're tired and you're having a hard time finishing the race because you took off so fast from the start. Number two, we're going to talk about the climbing net. Okay, it's basically a net that you climb over. I want to say it's about maybe 15 feet, 20 feet max high. I don't think it's 20 feet, it's about 15 feet. So if you are scared of heights, that might make your stomach a little bit queasy, but it's still not that bad. Just take your time on this one. Um, there has been a race. I don't know if somebody got nervous at the top of the climbing net, but there one time I did smell uh, the smell of urine at the top of the net. It was very strong, actually. A few other people smelled it as well. So it wasn't just me. Maybe some people got nervous and pissed their pants at the top of the net. That only happened one time. And I've raced multiple times, so it's not like this is a constant thing, constant issue you have to worry about. Urine on the top of the nets, don't worry, that's not going to happen. The climbing net, you don't need to worry about that one. That's probably by far one of the easiest obstacles in the race is the climbing net. There's some other things that are really easy. That's why I didn't put them on the list. Like I said, there are going to be 20 obstacles, but I'm just listing 12 of them. 12 of them that stand out to me or somebody who's new might be a little bit challenging or maybe very challenging, which is awesome. The more races you do, the better you're gonna get, the stronger you're gonna get, the more confidence you're gonna build. This is why Spartan races are so important to do if you're, even if you're new to fitness, you have a target, you have something to train for, you need to sign up for a Spartan race. Number three, the Atlas Stone. I think the female Atlas Stone, the one for the females is 50 pounds and the one for the males is 70 pounds. I have seen some of the females on my team Say, I'm gonna do the men's one, and they grab the 70 pound one, which is awesome. They can do that one. Atlas Stone, you just gotta squat down really low. Use your legs so you don't hurt your back. You very easily hurt your back on this one. Pick things up from the floor with your legs, always. In a Spartan race, at the grocery store, at home, doing yard work, pick everything up with your legs. Your legs is one of the biggest muscles on your body that you have. 
It's one of the biggest, strongest muscles on the body that you have. So pick stuff up with your legs. Don't use your back. If you bend over at your waist, you're gonna wear out those discs on your back and you're gonna end up straining your back and injure yourself. So don't use your back on the Atlas Stone. Squat down very low. That's why mobility is important. You should be doing some mobility training. You should be able to squat low, ass to the grass, really low, okay? Below parallel and pick that Atlas Stone up. Pull it close to the body and hug it. And you're just gonna walk it in a circle around that flag. Just once, it's just one lap around the flag. It's not too far. It's maybe 15 feet that way, 15 feet back max. Number five, the climbing walls. There's a few different climbing walls. We got five feet walls. We got six feet walls. We got seven feet walls. The wall is all about your technique. Once again, having a team. The good thing about it, even if you don't have a team, a lot of people there at the race are really friendly and people are more than willing to help you out without you even having to ask. A lot of people are there to help you out. Everybody here is a team, actually. Everybody wants to see you succeed. It's a very, very positive environment. Everybody's in a good mood. Everybody's having a good time. Everybody's having fun. So if you climb over this wall and you pull yourself too close into the wall, you're gonna have a really hard time getting your legs up. The key is to extending your arms out and getting your legs up in front of you. And then you need to lean over and hook one of your legs up over the wall. If you can lean and hook one of those legs up over the wall, you're good. If you get one leg hooked over the wall, okay? Um, run up to the wall, get an explosive jump. As you see in this video, you see uh, Stacy right here jumping over the wall. She just speed speeds up, picks up her speed, runs up to that wall as fast as possible, hooks one of the legs over. She's able to jump over. She's, um, I think she's like, five feet something, five, two, five, one, I don't know. But she gets over that wall, easy, pretty easy. Once she gets that leg hooked over and she kind of muscles it up, but it's about getting that leg over the wall. So, and then we've got the inverted walls, all right? So the inverted walls, is uh, those can be tougher. A lot of people need assistance over those. Once you practice those over and over, it's a lot of pulling strength, it's a lot of lat strength, and then once you get to a certain point, once again, the key is, Hooking that leg over. It's all about hooking the leg over. Remember, hook the leg. If you can get that leg hooked over, you're good. Leave your upper body kind of falling and swing that leg up and hook that leg over. That leg is just gonna pull you right over. So we got the climbing walls and then we've got the mud, all right? Everybody's favorite obstacle. Everybody's favorite obstacle that they love to hate. The mud or the dunk wall, whatever you wanna call it. Okay, the mud's cold sometimes, it's super cold. That's why you should be doing ice baths and cold showers so you can be like, when you go in that mud, it's like nothing for you. So you go in the mud, and I've seen different mud at different races. Some mud is thicker, some is like clay, some is like water. You come out, you go into the little dunk wall, you go under, the wall's about a foot wide. So you go in the mud, you go under the wall, come out through the other side, as you can see right here in this video. I mean, it's not too deep. You're not gonna drown or anything like that. You just kinda go under. The mud's up to about your chest level or so. And as you see in this video, some people are getting more muddy than others. There's, like I said, sometimes it's like clay. As you, there was one race I went into and I came out, there was a little bit of mud in my face and I took the water, as I usually do, and try and splash the mud out of my eyes, but it just made it worse because I splashed more mud into my eyes. Yeah, it was a big mess. So I eventually, and I and it was slippery, it was really hard to get out. I helped my team out and I was the last one in and I couldn't get out and I was struggling. I don't know how I managed to get out. I found a spot, moved around and finally found a spot where I was able to get some leverage and get out of the, the mud pit. And then we got the slip wall. Slip walls, this is tricky. The slip wall is normally right after the mud. That's why it's so slippery, okay? You're coming out of the mud, you're all slippery and wet. The rope is slippery and wet. The key to the slip wall is your angle. Grabbing onto that rope, keeping your feet out in front of you. Some people get to the top of the slip wall and they see the top and they get excited and they reach for the top, their feet slip out from underneath them and shh, you go right back down that slip wall. So you gotta keep your feet out in front of you and lean back. The second you get the wrong angle and lean forwards too much and your feet are down, you're gonna go back down that slip wall. You're sliding back to the bottom and you gotta start all over again. Keep your feet up and lean back. Once you see the top, get that leg over the wall. Any of these walls, slip walls, inverted walls, five feet walls, six feet walls, seven foot walls, the leg, it's not 
upper body. It's not this. Get that leg over the wall and that leg is just going to hook you and pull you over. So that's the slip wall. Your grip gets tired. But you just got to hold on. Pull yourself up. Leaning back. Keep those legs out in front of you. You got to stay leaning back. If you start to lean forward and shift just a little bit too much, bye bye. You're going back down to the bottom of that wall. I'm going to start over again. Um, I like to help my teammates up that slip wall, the ones that are struggling. I go right along the side of them and I help. So see if they're struggling. Their grip's dying. They got no more grip. They're slippery. I'm up right next to you and I'm pushing you up that wall, up that slip wall. And then we got the Hercules hoist. This one is tricky because the Hercules hoist, um, a lot of the ladies struggle with this one. This one's all about technique. You put your foot on the fence and you push off of that fence and you lean back. Foot against the fence. It's all about the foot and the leg. It's all about technique. You can do all these obstacles. It's just the technique. Okay. Foot against the fence, pull and lean back. Let your body fall all the way to the ground. Get a little bit more rope. Get that foot back up against the fence and fall back. As you see here in this video, you see this technique being used and you see, um, and you also see teammates who are helping each other out. You can help each other. So if somebody's struggling and you need to have your teammates help you out, you guys can help each other out, which is awesome. This is a team event. We can help each other out. We can give each other as much help as we need to make sure that we finish and get to the end of this race. This is an awesome thing to do if you're thinking about doing it and it's so much fun. I didn't think I was going to like it this much and I didn't think I'd be doing this many Spartan races, but here I am doing more Spartan races. And then we got the rings. Sometimes right where the rings are, we got monkey bars as well. So the rings are, once again, just grip strength. This race is all about grip strength. So you should be doing farmer's walks, bar hangs, grabbing onto 45 plates, holding them as long as you can. You should be using fat grips when you train. You gotta get your grip strong. Either way, you should have a strong grip. You should be training your grip. Who wants a weak grip? Having a strong grip could save your life or save somebody else's life in some type of event. Who knows? So the rings, that's all about technique. And by the time people get to the rings, their grip is tired. You might be able to say, yeah, I can do rings or yeah, I can climb the rope. Yeah, you can. But when you're tired, you're running, you've already gripped all these other things. Your grip is tired. Your grip gets fatigued. That's the biggest issue during a Spartan race is the grip strength. So the rings, once again, just all about technique. Some people just get tired and they let go and they're kind of far away from each other. So you got to reach, grab the other one, reach, grab the other one. Same thing with the monkey bars. The bars are this fat. So they're hard to hold on to. It's not your regular monkey bars that you used to have in the playground when you were a kid in elementary school. These are big fat monkey bars. You just gotta grab onto them and they're kind of far apart, they're far away from each other. It's another thing that if you have a team, you can help each other out, you can spot your teammates. So grabbing onto the monkey bars, swinging, and just try to get to the end. And then we got the Z wall. Once again, grip strength. If you could do rock climbing, this will help you out with that. Find a rock climbing gym, practice some rock climbing. Get that grip stronger. The key to the Z wall, keeping your hips in as close to the wall as possible. As soon as you move your hips away from the wall, you're gonna fall off. Stay against that Z wall so you're holding onto these wooden blocks just with your fingertips. So there's where we talk about that grip strength coming back into play, right? Holding on and take your time because your feet slip off the bottom part too very easily. Your feet are wet, they're muddy, so they're slipping off. Take your time. Your feet should be angled out, not this way against the wooden blocks. They should be angled out, body in close to the wall as possible. And you want to take your time on these. And focus on your technique and don't step wrong and don't grab wrong or else you're going to slip off, start all over again. So get to the end, whoosh, smack that bell. Then we got the barbed wire crawl. This one's pretty fun. Some races the barbed wire is lower, some it's a little bit higher. Sometimes in the race there's areas where it's lower and areas where it's higher. If you get your butt up too high, you're gonna rip your leggings or scratch your back or you're gonna cut yourself on the barbed wire. So stay low, just do a little army crawl. You should be doing planks in the gym. You should be training your core. You gotta have a strong core if you wanna complete a Spartan race. You gotta practice, you gotta train. Do a Spartan race, but train. Do your homework, do your cardio, do your running. 
there's a lot of stop and go. It's not just straight running. Some races are flat, some have more hills. I did one in Spartan and I did a race in Big Bear with a high elevation and that one killed me because of the elevation gain. It was really hard to breathe. It felt like you're suffocating. We were going up and down the ski resort for the whole race. So we're going up and down those black diamond hills that people normally snowboard down. We're jogging up those hills or running, sometimes walking because you can't breathe, coughing, trying to catch your breath. There's races that are more flat. So it depends on how much hills there are and, and that's gonna determine how much more difficult the race is. So if you're starting out and you're not sure, then start with a, a stadium race where you do it at the Dodger Stadium. So the barbed wire crawl, just keep yourself down low. Some races we have more barbed wire to crawl, some we have less. Some people roll under the barbed wire. I'm not a fan of that technique, I'd rather just crawl. Last but not least, we've got the rope climb. This one's all about the technique. Some people just muscle it up. No, no foot clamp at all. This is all about the foot clamp. I prefer the J-hook method. I make a foot clamp, I clamp my feet down. I, I, I have a really tight clamp. I have a really tight clamp and I use that clamp to help pull myself up the rope. And then I bring my feet up and then I reclamp. Bring my feet up and I reclamp as you see the technique here in this video. Careful on the way down. By the time you get to the top, you're fatigued. It's not a regular rope climb. It's normally at the end of the race. Your grip is tired. You're fatigued. Your muscles are fatigued. You should eat something with carbs on the way through the race. Bring something in your backpack. You can bring a backpack. You can bring your cameras. Bring it in your backpack. Bring chalk. Do what you need to do. Bring, uh, if you have to bring a backpack with an extra pair of shoes, you can do that. But I wouldn't recommend that. I've never done that. But if you really need to, you can do that as well after you come out of the mud. Change your shoes and socks if needed. That's gonna slow your race time down. You don't have time for all that. Just finish the race in your muddy shoes like a real Spartan. Ooh. The rope climb is the most challenging obstacle in this race. I see people struggle with this one the most. Stay tuned for my video that's gonna come out on technique on climbing the rope. You gotta have a J hook. You gotta have a foot clamp if you wanna climb this rope. It's all about technique. It doesn't take as much upper body strength as you might think. So leave your questions in the comments section down below. Make sure you subscribe and hit that like button down below. Jeremy the Machine Scott, 